thank you for coming today. Uh, yesterday was a very, very difficult day in our public hearing, and it was impossible for us to continue because we felt that the processes were unfair, unclear, we were not given access to the city clerk's decision, and basically the entire meeting was run improperly. Uh, comments were made that were both uh, very unfortunate and condescending to other councillors. Councillors were cut off on their microphones, and indeed, a number of times we did not over, uh, did, we did not um, uphold the chair's decisions. So all we're asking is for a non-toxic environment to work in, a fair environment, and good governance. And yesterday was no example of it. And now I'll hand it over to Councillor Park. Great. Thank you very much. Um, yes, it, um, it's very unusual that you will see uh, myself with the uh, NPA councillors at a press conference and it takes a lot uh, for us to walk out of a meeting. I would never have contemplated doing that if the situation had not been so egregious in my mind. I take my responsibility as a councillor seriously and I felt that uh, last night uh, warranted my protest to several things that happened at, the, at that uh, public hearing. Uh, to give you the setting, the council um, normally has 10 members and, and the mayor. Uh, last night there were only seven in attendance. Um, Vision, who normally holds uh, the balance of power, only had three of its members there. There were three Vision, three, Vision, three NPA councillors and myself. An unusual balance in terms of the voting. Um, the uh, public hearing uh, ended up uh, running to the 10 o'clock timeline. Uh, my first real problem around the way in which the meeting was handled and the feeling that um, that democracy was being undermined by the way it was being handled was the fact that um, that public hearing would have ended at 10 o'clock had a motion to extend it not been placed on the floor and voted on. Um, normally when the mayor is chairing we see that that's done in a, a very easy fashion uh, well before the 10 o'clock line in most cases he would ask for a motion to extend the meeting um, and uh, and it, it, it's voted on or not voted on as the case may be, but at least we get a chance to consider it well in advance of 10 o'clock. Um, last night I was worried. We were approaching that time. It was 20 to 10. I put forward a point of order asking if my motion, to uh, if a motion to extend the meeting would not be in order. And uh, Councillor Louie, who was in the chair, said, oh, no, no, we have plenty of time. Now, as time ticked towards 10, um, there were numerous times when other councillors, particularly to Councillor Di Genova, made the same appeal to the chair. Um, at quarter two, at 10 minutes two, at eight minutes two, at three minutes two, at two minutes two, saying, would not a motion to extend this meeting be in order? And each time she was ruled out of order and I was ruled out of order on this. That is not the way to conduct a meeting. It's not the way to fulfill the matter of democracy, which is to continue with that meeting. Um, in the end, uh, there was a motion that was put forward. It was actually at one or two minutes past ten, um, but we did extend the meeting. But the issue that really caused me to leave that meeting was when Councillor Stevenson put forward a motion to refer the matter of discussion to staff for further, uh, for further analysis. And I raised a point of order saying, I wanted clarification on whether that would be in order or not, remarking that I remember at previous public hearings, one in particular, where I put forward a, symbol, a similar referral motion and I was ruled out of order. Um, so in this case, Councillor Louis um, in the chair conferred with the, the city staff. Also, I remember in all those previous meetings, it was very transparent. The chair says, I have conferred with the city clerk, and the decision is this. Um, in last night's case, Councillor Louis conferred with the city clerk, was not transparent about what that conversation transpired, asked other city staff if they could give him advice. They said, no, it's up to the city clerk. Again, we were not informed of what that conversation was about. And then he peremptorily ruled that Councillor um, Stevenson's motion was in order to refer the matter back. Um, and at that point, I felt that I could not stay in a meeting and condone um, a set of deci a, a decision that runs counter where rules are applied unfairly. One set of rules 
to in this case vision counselors a different set of rules um, to myself. For your information, for any media here present, if you give me your card, you give me your email address, I will send you the video clip of the meeting that took place on the Rise Alliance project in which Councillor Louis first uh, clearly stated in that meeting he believed my motion to refer that Rise application to staff for more analysis was out of order, followed by the mayor conferring with the city clerk and with the city manager on that very issue and then stating, yes, Councillor Carr's motion is for referral is out of order. It is not democratic to apply one set of rules to one group of people and another set of rules to another. And that is why I felt it important to stand up for that democratic principle of fairness and transparency. That is why I walked out. So why didn't you guys, you had four votes, why didn't you just vote on the because that would have left hanging the very issue of the process that, would, that took place last night and the improper application well, of fair rules. You could have held a news conference to complain about it this morning, but ended the meeting with a decision. Well, we could have, and we still will have, a, I, I assume, the possibility of that decision. The, 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 the hearing has not ended. There's no decision that was reached on that item, so there will be more on that issue. Another important issue that happened is that Councillor Louie invited Councillor Stevenson to make the deferral even though he would to make a motion even though he was not on the queue and others were waiting to speak. So that is another issue. I have never seen a chair invite someone to speak before the others have had an opportunity. It seemed very peculiar and again along with the rest of the evening was most unusual. Why do you think that is the case? We could not comment on somebody else's motives. But this is, is this the first time that you've had these kinds of concerns about the way the uh, council is being uh, administered? This is the first time that there has been such a series of unusual things happening. There's been many evenings where there has been a toxic environment, but this was simply the worst. Yeah. But aside from the your story versus Councilor Louis' story. I'm trying to understand why the public should care about this beyond the fact that you're going to have to have another public hearing. So all 20 some odd people who spoke last night may have to be carried. We don't have a ruling from the city clerk um, on the state of the public hearing. We were past the point of having um, of having speakers to the issue. Uh, the issue had moved into debate. Um, and then the meeting ended. Um, there is one interpretation I've heard, which is that it would have to be continued. No other councillors who were present, who weren't present, would be allowed to participate once the debate has started. But we're waiting for a ruling on that. Um, so that will that that will be forthcoming. Um, but on the matter, um, really, of of um, why, why the public should care? Yeah, you know, so many times I sit at the council table. And I hear people, and it, is, it was the case last night where people said, you know, we don't think you're listening. Um, and they said that specifically to the vision counselors. We don't think you're listening. We think that you've got your minds made up. We think this process is stacked against us. I completely understood how people felt. As a counselor sitting in that chamber, I felt that I wasn't listened to. I felt the rules weren't fair and applied. I felt that there may have been a hidden agenda there. Um, and who knows what that is. I mean, trusting the developer in that particular case, we did give a lot of money to vision. Um, uh, but those are the kind of suspicions, suspicions that come to one's mind when you feel that the process is not being fairly, uh, uh, and rules are not being fairly applied. What do you think is the reason behind this group? And that I've heard you complain in the past and all of you about, about the inequity of the way vision runs its council meetings. I'm wondering if you think that it's a, a deterioration or is this something that's totally abnormal? As Councillor Ball says, it's, I'm not going to try and interpret how a public feels. You should ask them how they felt and why they did what they did last night. Um, and, and in particular, the chair, Councillor Bill. Um, and I leave it to him to interpret his own feelings. But I have to say it was the first time in my experience at Council uh, where Vision, which has normally got the balance of power and normally has the balance of votes in a meeting, did not have them. And they can make the argument that this is your opportunity for mischief making given that you had the power and you had the ability to walk out and, and, and create a lack of power. 
Absolutely, and we did walk out and leave a lack of quorum, and we could have stayed and completed that agenda item. But when you feel something is so egregiously wrong in a process, you have to make a decision that's aside from the ultimate decision for which you are charged, which is the decision of the public hearing outcome. And I felt that the process was so egregious, and there was, um, it was so transparent in my mind how unfairly the rules were being applied to one counselor in that case, a vision counselor, versus myself in previous meetings. I felt that I had to make a statement about that, and that's what walking out in this press conference are all but about. But I, I understand there have been other public hearings where the decision has been deferred even after the, the speakers have finished. Um, like a, a pen, something recently on Pendle where it was delayed for a month so that staff could come back with more information. Yes, and some meetings in that case, um, this, uh, and, you, and you probably all know that at times counselor refers its uh, decision, its debate and decision to a future council meeting. And in the interim time, if there's any questions that we have still outstanding as counselors, those questions can get answered. In this case, that was not was what was being asked for. It was, uh, it was a, a simple referral um, uh, uh, after debate. Uh, debate had started. So we were in a very different situation than the beginning of debate or, or prior to debate. Although there was a request for more information. That's why yeah. there was debate. Oh, yeah, Francis, I'll, I'll have to ask you um, to give me your email, and I'll send. In fact, I already have sent you. So you can take a look uh, of the video clip uh, where Councillor Louie and then the mayor uh, both uh, uh, said my motion to refer an item, which was the Wise Alliance item, was ruled out of order um, and was not admissible. And the mayor clearly states in that um, that it is the obligation of council to make a decision on a matter before the public hearing, yes or no, not to refer it back for more consultation. But that's one example I've seen in many where they referred it. So they, they've heard the speakers, they started some debate, and then they referred and, it. And I can probably give you. You know, so that's one, but yeah. I'm sure other people Yes, and there's many other weapons. times, there's many other times when decisions, uh, when a decision ha um, is in front of us, where the citizens come forward, downtown Eastside Plan is one that was, I, I can give you a list um, where, uh, where, where um, the citizens are saying we would like uh, to see this matter referred back to the, uh, the staff, to the public for more, con more consultation. And I asked staff at that point, in questions to staff, is that in order? Can, I mean, my understanding from previous rulings on my referral motions is that um, it's not it's not being in order, but I need clarification for the public's point of view. And staff have come back and said to me, you're right, it's not in order to refer, if the deal with it you can amend, or you deal with it yes or no. So perhaps, Francis, this is a case where a referral motion from a vision counselor gets to go through, and one from a green counselor doesn't, and that is wrong. We're doing a story today on the housing problems in Vancouver, which is largely a, a, a problem of supply. And, and I'm just wondering what your thoughts are on whether this delay of this building is going to impact the housing prices in the city uh, and, and make it harder for people to find places to live. Uh, I'm sorry, that has nothing to do with the issue that at hand, which was that the processes throughout the entire evening were unfair, they were not transparent, we were not given the decision of the clerk to understand the chair's decision. We are always given a decision that is usually transparent. We usually have no problem having a motion to extend, and indeed the entire evening was conducted in a way that was inappropriate for all of the council. So we think that as a result of this, we the, uh, the, the, this particular public hearing, that you, know, you might have been giving ammunition to either side to ask for an appeal or to give a report. Do you think that, that given what you now have done in withdrawing the form, you have actually uh, given grounds for uh, an appeal either for the proponents or for the opponents? No more than the, in, the inappropriate uh, processes that we were dealing with. No more than that. So, uh, you know, to say that we don't know um, the outcome of uh, Kirk's decision on this matter, and it could be that this is just a delay. Um, and that we will continue the discussion um, with the councillors who were present last night. Um, so I, I, you know, I await the clerk's decision on that. Um, but because, uh, to answer an earlier question, um, but because uh, this public hearing item is not concluded, um, speaking substantively to the issue, 
um, of the public hearing is not in order because it, it would prejudice the um, the outcome and the vote. Um, so as you probably know, while an item is under the, under uh, a public hearing and not completed as part of a, a public hearing, um, councillors are not allowed to speak to the. But you, but you don't know whether or not you've actually prejudiced the public hearing or the, whether the uh, chair. Is we have had no. We have had no decision from the from the city manager and the city clerk working together. And we are certainly looking forward to that discussion. And we would have been happy to hear that decision on the evening. And then we would have been able to move forward in an appropriate fashion. Let us know what the video of me that was cut just before this camp. Yeah. Is, is that video available? Or do you know anything about the technical issues that happened last night? Because some of us were polling online and we didn't see what happened uh, coming up to that. Uh, we, I, I did receive a text message at 10.30 that the video feed, a uh, live feed, was cut last night. Um, I did have somebody call me this morning to say that they that they are um, in conversation with an expert on this and that that their interpretation is that that feed was cut internally. Um, so it was, a, it was a cut that happened within City Hall. Um, that is an interesting matter um, that I think needs to be pursued. I spoke to the council really about that because it's in those monthly advances. Do you believe it? Well, I've got different information given to me by a member of the public, so I'd like to pursue it. Um, Adrian, you came out in opposition to the project last night, so that's already on the record. It is. In public and Councillor Deal in support. And, and yeah. Councillor Deal in support. Um, the NPA members, uh, are you in support of this project? Or We're not opposed? able to discuss that because the public hearing has been suspended. Cannot right, but you've heard, from, all of, to you've heard from the whole public. It's not like it's not you know, your mind was open to what the public had to say. You you my mind was open to now. what everyone had to say, both staff and and all the people who came in to speak. But I had not made my decision at the time that uh, we had to suspend because the process was so unfair. Tell me how this is not a good I've often well, that could perhaps tell you how important it was to all of us that uh, after living through the entire previous uh, processes, that we all felt, without discussing it, that this had gone far enough, it was not appropriate, it was just simply wrong. Do you stand by claims that Louis was making it up as a better work decision? Uh, I did not make those claims. I can tell you that it was a very peculiar process that was not clear to us, and certainly unlike any of the uh, hearings that we've been through before. I, um, I think we will wrap it, but yeah. uh, but to conclude, I think that uh, uh, um, a clear, public, and transparent um, statement about the advice from the clerk would have been helpful in this process, and it didn't occur last night. The fact Thank that the city manager's office is doing this and now looking at how to resolve this process. How you that it's a new territory for them? Um, my understanding is that it, 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 it may well be. Uh, certainly I've had at least one conversation that came from that direction. I went through the rules of procedure. I could not find anything in our rules of procedure uh, that talks specifically about whether you refer, whether a referral motion and a public hearing is in order or not. That seems to be a gap at this point, so I guess there's the new, new territory to be, uh, to be chartered in this regard. I'd like to thank you all for coming. Thank you. Um, I think if there are other questions, we can handle them individually, but I, I, I thank you very much for your attendance today. Thank you all.